This is what y'all do in y'all cult church. The preacher just come and wave his hand like he's got this power. Shalaba, hutaba, sataba, hut. Next thing you know, catch him, catch him. Okay, catch him. <laughs> Am I right, son? That's right. What y'all doing, y'all church? Turn around, friend. Gotta make it easy for them. Chalaba, Sataba. In the name. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> That's what y'all do. That's what they do. Last one to shut. Last one. <laughs> Yield my sub Taliban. I haven't got to end yet. You Benny Hinn lovers, the only time you fall down when somebody in back of you to catch you. Fire on, on your life, my brother. Touch. Pick him up. Fire on you. Sound of words, and it's coming from this throne. Holy, holy, holy. That is crazy. years. Whoa. Thank you for the touch. Viewer, Hallelujah. are you a deacon in the cult? Are you an elder in a cult? Are you a so-called cult apostle? Mm. Are you one of the mothers in the motherboard of your cult? Right. Fire! Phil, 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 Phil. The phenomenon of faith healing in churches has gained attention over the years. Figures like Benny Hinn have been known for their theatrical displays, such as waving jackets or blowing on people to supposedly heal them, often resulting in dramatic falls. These practices are obviously fake. What they do is use psychological and physical manipulation to create an illusion of healing. Other preachers who have employed similar techniques include Todd Bentley and Peter Popoff. Such displays raise questions about the authenticity of these healing practices and the ethical implications of exploiting people's vulnerabilities. The theatrical nature of faith healing practices in churches has drawn skepticism from both within and outside religious communities. These displays are manipulative and exploitative, as they often take place in emotionally charged environments where people are seeking relief from their pain or suffering. Benny Hinn, for example, gained notoriety for his miracle crusades where he would engage in extravagant gestures like waving his jacket over people or blowing on them, leading them to fall down in what is often referred to as being slain in the spirit. These events are often accompanied by dramatic music, dimmed lights, and an atmosphere that encourages vulnerability and expectation. While some attest to experiencing healing or spiritual transformation as a result of these practices, true believers who know the word of God view them with skepticism, voicing their concerns that psychological factors like suggestion, crowd psychology, and the desire for a transformative experience play a significant role in these apparent healings. This raises ethical concerns about whether these preachers are genuinely helping people or simply capitalizing on their vulnerabilities. Todd Bentley gained attention for his healing crusades where he employed forceful physical gestures and loud shouts to create a dramatic atmosphere. God, I command polio. 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 I just command healing in that leg. Can you feel that? You want this anointing? Yes! You ready? Yeah. 
Better than it was. <laughs> Shabba. Shabba. From God. Lord, I thought right now that this holy knee. Uh, bam! 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 was exposed for using hidden earpieces to receive information about audience members during his healing services, giving the illusion of supernatural knowledge. Rodney Howard Brown, known for his laughter revival meetings, gained attention in the 1990s for promoting an experience where people would break out in uncontrollable laughter, claiming it to be a form of spiritual healing. <laughs> <laughs> Catherine Coleman, a prominent fake evangelist in the mid-20th century, was known for her healing services and miracle crusades. She was often seen laying her hands on people and claiming that they were being healed through her touch. W. V. Grant, was known for his flamboyant style and dramatic healing displays. He often used items like wristbands and prayer cloths, claiming that they possessed supernatural healing properties. Juanita Bynum gained popularity with her No More Sheets sermon and her involvement in the so-called prophetic movement. She conducted services where she would lay hands on individuals, often leading to emotional responses and apparent manifestations of healing. Smith Wigglesworth, an early 20th century fake evangelist, was known for his aggressive and unconventional healing methods, including slapping and hitting people as a means of driving out sickness and demons. Aya Allen, was known for his healing revivals where he would lay hands on people and shout prayers for healing, often resulting in dramatic falls and apparent healing. The utilization of fake healing tactics in churches can have a range of negative impacts on individuals and communities. Many of these healing practices are often accompanied by calls for financial contributions, claiming that donations will lead to greater blessings or healing. This can create financial strain on vulnerable individuals who may feel compelled to give beyond their means in the hopes of receiving healing or miracles. The dramatic nature of these healing displays, with people falling or exhibiting emotional responses, can manipulate individuals' emotions and suggest that these displays are genuine miracles. People seeking healing may be susceptible to this manipulation, leading to feelings of disappointment, confusion, and even self-doubt if their healing does not occur as expected. Relying solely on faith healing practices can deter individuals from seeking proper medical care for their physical or mental health conditions. This delay in receiving medical attention can worsen their conditions and lead to serious consequences. Encouraging blind faith in these practices can discourage critical thinking and skepticism. Individuals may become more susceptible to manipulation and less likely to question the authenticity of claims made by charismatic leaders. When people discover that they have been misled or deceived by leaders who employ fake healing tactics, their trust in religious institutions can be shattered. This disillusionment can lead to a loss of faith, both in the specific leaders and in organized religion as a whole. Those who do not experience the expected healing outcomes may feel isolated and stigmatized within their religious communities. They might wrongly believe that their lack of healing is due to their lack of faith or personal shortcomings. Relying solely on faith healing can potentially discourage individuals from taking proactive steps to improve their own health and well-being through healthier lifestyles, medical treatments, and proper care. These fake healing tactics can also contribute to a negative perception of religious communities by outsiders, who may view them as engaging in exploitative practices or promoting irrational beliefs. According to the Bible, healing comes from God and not man. The scripture says, Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. This passage emphasizes the power of prayer, faith, and the role of the church. Matthew 9 verse 20-22 says, And, behold, a woman, which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years, came behind him, and touched the hem of his garment, for she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort, thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. This account illustrates the connection between faith and healing, 
as the woman's faith in Jesus led to her healing. In Matthew 8 verse 5 to 13, the centurion expresses his faith in Jesus' authority, saying, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Jesus commends the centurion's faith and heals the servant from a distance. Psalm 103 verse 2 to 3 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. This psalm speaks of God as the ultimate healer who forgives sins and heals diseases. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26 says, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. In this verse, God promises healing to the Israelites as a result of their obedience and faithfulness. In these passages, true healing is often tied to faith, trust in God's authority, and a recognition of God's power to bring about physical and spiritual restoration. While these scriptures highlight divine intervention, they also emphasize the role of faith and obedience in the healing process. Fake healing practices can harm individuals emotionally, spiritually, and financially. They can also tarnish the reputation of true churches. It's essential for individuals and communities to critically examine these practices and prioritize authenticity, ethical behavior, and sincere spiritual growth. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I do pray that we all continue in striving to please God. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you can be notified when new videos are uploaded. Thanks for watching.